कैन यू गिव अ रफ एस्टिमेट ऑफ एक्सपेंसिस अदर दैन फ्लाइट ट्रेनिंग इन यू एस अदर दैन फ्लाइट ट्रेनिंग इन यू एस द मेन एक्सपेंस वुड बी आई हेलो 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 वेलकम टू द पायलट पॉडकास्ट एपिसोड टेन एंड वी ऑल्सो मिस यू आई एम श्योर यू हैव मिस्ड अस एज वेल एंड ड्यू टू सम कोर्स वी आर नॉट एबल टू मेक इट एंड विल ट्राई टू मेक द मोस्ट ऑफ इट एंड पुट अप मोर एंड मोर पॉडकास्ट इन द कमिंग वीक्स Hello everyone welcome back to India's number one pilot podcast where pilots come and share their wonderful experiences with all the aspiring pilots I know you guys have missed us and you have missed the pilot podcast and we are trying our best to reach out to all of you every week so today I and Captain Neha will be discussing few things Captain Neha will ask me few questions which are related to student pilots life and if you are an aspiring pilot make sure you watch this podcast till the end so that you don't repeat the mistakes which i have made and which captain neha has made during her pilot training so without any delay let's get started so i will be asking you about 20 questions related to your pilot training your information and knowledge and experience about this pilot training and uh, i'm sure it will definitely help the aspiring pilots watching this and uh, let's get started with the very first question of this uh, episode how difficult is the flight training in a flight school flight training is difficult and i have heard people saying like it's easy it's like doable and stuff but initially it's difficult and once you start learning once you start knowing the procedures and stuff it's Got get it. it get easy correct but there will be some point in your training where you would feel low because things wouldn't go your way correct. at that time you correct. need to work extra hard put in correct. all the efforts and correct. try to overcome the things which you are not able to perform correct so let's say when i was doing my pilot training so initially when you try to handle the aircraft when correct. you get over the controls True. and you try to land a plane initially for 2 3 lessons you would struggle landing a plane and you would feel like nothing is going my correct, way correct, like correct correct pilot is not absolutely the i totally right agree yeah, yeah yeah so pilot may be not the right thing for me because it's very difficult to learn a uh, landing because you don't fly plane every day this is the first time you are flying a plane true right so initially like when i was landing plane for the first 2 to 3 times by myself i used to bounce on the runway like 2 3 times but eventually i did like 20 30 landings then i got a hang of it and after that my landings were good correct 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 so initially doing the maneuvers initially doing the maneuvers is a challenge maintaining speed is a challenge maintaining altitude and speed everything together doing an approach is a challenge whereas later on as you get used to it and as you know what has to be done in order to increase speed what has to be done in order to keep it on that particular glide so then it becomes even the landings for that matter yes it's it's absolutely i agree oh uh, i mean i i remember even my flight school days and the solo uh, time when that time you feel you get demotivated when instructor you know shouts at you or he is not happy with the performance and then but when you perform well when you overcome that and you perform well then it's like yeah you have made yes, it yes the done. first landing you do by yourself which yeah. is perfectly correct, safe correct 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 on that day you start building confidence correct, in correct, yourself correct. as a pilot True. and from that day onwards True. your landings get better Definitely. and better with Definitely. each day passing so this is a true even for the uh, you know type rating also whenever you go for type rating everything is so different because now the aircraft is new the procedures are different and we have the abnormal procedures also so you feel it is so much you feel overwhelmed and then if you make a slightest of the error and if the instructor tells you something then you feel that demotivation and then you feel that yes you really need to work even more you know the training phase is something which you really have to 
work on yourself each and every day with your calm mind and with more and more motivation yes definitely and if instructor tells you about certain yeah. things like this did not go the way hmm, he hmm, taught hmm, you hmm, hmm, hmm. okay so what i personally did was work on that thing correct, and in the next flight correct, correct. try to be better than the previous flight so that's how you learn and grow definitely right? definitely there is briefing there is debriefing so you can improve on what things you have done wrong so even though it is challenging but you can overcome it there is nothing impossible yes and if it's not challenging In then it would be boring i guess yeah <laughs> <laughs> true all right moving on to the second one on a scale of 0 to 10 how would you rate usa for commercial pilot training i would rate a uh, 10 out of 10 because i guess it's the hub of pilot training yes like if you if you take an example like india has around 260 to 270 airports and uh, i trained in florida so florida has around 550 roughly okay so you can Great. imagine That's how a, how lot. vast the aviation is in united states and uh, if you train at lot. such a level Correct. and then you come back to india and you fly you will feel like you know all the advanced navigation system already hmm. because hmm. Uh, aviation in us is huge Correct, correct. And Definitely. I think Florida is the hub of pilot training. Yes. There are so many flight schools yes. in Florida. Yes. And uh, they they are training like numerous pilots from all over the globe. Correct, correct. So the main thing to consider for training in US is the cost. So training in India for a conventional CPL would be around 40 to 45 lakh rupees. Hmm. and in us the training cost is 40 to 45 lakh rupees but the additional 5 to 10 lakh rupees is for the accommodation your travel your that's visa right. that's your right. food and once you come back to india 3 to 5 lakh rupees for your conversion correct so that is the amount which is additional let's say 10 lakh rupees so that is the difference if you train in india you like you get trained at 40 to 45 lakh rupees but if you go to us it would be around 50 to 55 lakh rupees correct correct including the food and accommodation yes, and everything. Yes, everything correct correct flight tickets also add up to that mm. yes so it all depends mm-hmm. like if you can stretch a bit for your cpl definitely consider us for your flight training but if you are very stringent on a budget then mm-hmm. you can consider india for your pilot training correct correct let's move on to question 3 do student pilots get scholarship for pilot training yes they do get but it's very rare so there is no like scholarship available for students 365 days a year but sometimes some companies do come up with scholarship and that is like once in 5 years or once in 10 years but there's there's no scholarship from government okay. there's no scholarship from private institutions okay okay which uh, run all around the year okay so okay. it's very difficult to get a scholarship for pilot training okay i see and uh, is there any category where any particular uh, you know like sc or st a uh, category of uh, students do get the scholarship for pilot training by mm. government mm, not anything that i have heard of till date <laughs> and if okay. there is available i am not sure about it question number 4 do you have a social life during commercial pilot training yes definitely there is a great social life but you need to manage your time well correct so definitely most of the time you will spend at school then after that you come home you prepare your meals and stuff but every now and then we used to go out we used to go to the parks we used to visit various new places okay. restaurants okay. and mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. and we used to play like cricket lawn tennis it, basketball oh, wow. everything nice so we were we were like active and stuff so we like we all were of the similar age group so everyone was inst- interested in playing like volleyball and swimming then we played correct, like correct, pool correct. and stuff so it was good and yes you do get time for your social life mm-hmm. and uh, if you manage your time well you can study okay okay you can fly the plane you right. can enjoy your life okay yes yes definitely and take out personal time for your hobbies and stuff so you can do everything just you need to manage your time well correct definitely yes 
बिकॉज इवन इन द फ्लाइट स्कूल दैट्स द टाइम वेन यू हैव एक्चुअली मूवड आउट ऑफ होम फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम मोस्ट प्रोबाबली बिकॉज इफ समबडी हैज डन देयर ग्रेजुएशन एट सम अदर सिटी अदर दैन देयर होम बेस देन दे माइट हैव स्टेट बट देन मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स इट हैपन्स दैट वेन यू गो फॉर फ्लाइट स्कूल यू हैव स्टेप्ड आउट ऑफ होम फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम एंड दैट्स वेन यू एक्चुअली get to meet people and then get to socialize and then go out to you know different restaurants and uh, sometimes partying and yes. uh, staying up late night when there is no restriction from home and you are on your own so that is one of the thing which you know students do but at the same time you need to be responsible if you have a flight next day or if you have a training flight next day then you need to wake up at that particular time and make sure that you are not under the influence of alcohol also when you're going for a flight so you need to be responsible as a trainee pilot itself and you need to start building your habit from there itself because you cannot be like okay i will do whatever i want and then you wake up late and then miss the training flight and then instructor calls you and you're sleeping and you're in a hangover that is not something which is expected from any student pilot right so even though you can socialize you need to know up to what extent you could do that flight school had something called as Uh, no show so if you don't if you have a flight let's say mm-hmm. at 8 am mm-hmm. in the morning and if you don't report for for that flight so you get a no show so first no show i think it was at no cost but if you get if you do it the second time then you would be charged i guess 500 dollars i'm not mm-hmm. sure about it because i did not get any no show <laughs> <laughs> good <laughs> yes and the third one is a warning or a termination if you get like okay for the third time okay, it's something okay. like that Okay. So schools are also pretty strict about it. Right. So yes, everyone is disciplined in that case. Right, right, right. So yeah, as long as you can keep a good balance between that, it is good. Like, as well as uh, the time that you get at home, and then the time you go for a flight school, and then your personal time. So of course you have to, you know, prepare and improve on your skills. Whatever you have. you know made mistakes you as an any student pilot has made mistake on the previous flight you need to work on it it is chair flying or you know flying in your mind and you think okay you are going to do this these procedures at that particular time and then improve yourself so these need to be done to polish it so that you don't repeat those mistakes again right on the yes next definitely then question number 5 Is it difficult to fly an aircraft? Flying an aircraft, I think it's not difficult, but the knowledge which you should have while flying the plane is very important. And uh, to understand how the aircraft works, to understand the aircraft systems, what if something goes wrong? How would you anticipate that situation? That is the difficult part of flying a plane. Correct. Right. So you need to study. You need to know each and everything about the aircraft. What if the electrical system fail? What you need Correct. to do? What if the engine goes Correct. out? What Correct. you need to do? Correct. Okay. Correct. If something happens to the plane, then how you handle it? That's what matter. Basically, you need to have a backup plan ready yes. in mind when any thing goes wrong, or you need to be, you know, decisive at that point of time. so it's not only flying the plane it's about applying a certain abnormal procedure whenever you face it and making certain decisions whenever you need to yes yeah. and that decision should be always right yes yes <laughs> <laughs> yes definitely so knowledge and skills both are very much important in order to fly the plane safely right yes yeah then moving on to question 6 How scared were you during your first medical? So during my first medical, I was a bit nervous because I didn't know what test they would take and stuff. Where did you do your first? As in, you must have done class two and then class one. Yes, so, so class two I did from Hiranandani Pawai, and uh, 
it was pretty straightforward audiometry ecg then blood test urine test eye test and stuff okay so at that point i was just nervous but like i haven't done a full body checkup right so i was just nervous like what will be my reports like got it, got what it, if it. anything goes wrong got it, got i it, got couldn't it. be a pilot true true right so after i got done with my class 2 i was declared fit and Off. then the mm-hmm. doctor told me to go for class 1 mm-hmm. so for mm-hmm. that i need to take an appointment got from uh, delhi there's some procedure to got follow it, so it. i opted from nanavati which is a civil hospital right. so i think the process took around 2 to 3 days and uh, they did a thorough check up of <laughs> my whole body yes. and i was like <laughs> i was I like they they, they <laughs> what how, do you mean yes like i'm i'm <laughs> yeah. a normal person i am healthy and they did yeah. like sonography right. and then eye right. test right. then right. audiometry correct i uh, that was like very overwhelming i was like and uh, even if there is there's range parameters so even True. if it's above 0.01 yeah. <laughs> true <laughs> that they yeah. are they will ask you to like repeat visit the, the uh, doctor and so then uh, repeat the test correct, after a correct, week correct. so i was like they are very strict about so, the test but yes. generally everyone who is uh, going for their medicals would be nervous at certain point but now if you tell me like go and do your <laughs> class one i would just can, go tomorrow uh, and correct, give correct, my medical correct, because correct. i know that there's nothing to worry true, about true true so yeah at the first time it is kind of before going for class one class to you know actually what tests will be done in class 2 but when you go for class 1 so back in time in 2007 when i did my initial class 1 that time there was no nanavati the centers were only delhi afcme bangalore iim and the third one jorhat mec had just opened that time okay and you know because of so many people going for pilot training back then there was waiting for 6 months at these centers the only appointment i got was in jorhat which is in assam, assam okay and now i go there and that is a air force station it is it is good medical it's a, it's a very huge facility over there they are all air force doctors and then um, i saw someone who was medically unfit when i you know during those 3 days when i was there you know so he was tem- you know permanently medically unfit because of his audiometry so you feel scared looking at certain things happening around you that you know any parameter going here and there will not be acceptable you know as a normal human being even you can go on for the whole life without noticing certain minute uh, problems in somebody's uh, health but then when it comes to pilot they really check thoroughly and after the medical i was like they check you absolutely from head to toe <laughs> in and out and nothing not even a single body part is left unchecked <laughs> so yes. that's what you feel i i also got a date for the uh, delhi afc okay. right hmm. so i got it 3 months later so i was in a position that i couldn't wait for 3 months so okay. i opted for nanavati right, it's expensive right, right. but i had no choice correct correct so moving to question 7 how many hours did you spend for your training at flight school so it depends on the phase you are in so for private if you have one flight a day then uh, you spend around 2 to 3 hours at flight school if you have one lesson so if someone is doing two lessons a day then he or she might spend 6 hours at flight school okay. but uh, i wouldn't recommend doing two lessons when you are in your private pilot license mm-hmm, training mm-hmm. because you're learning new things and during that phase it's very difficult to absorb things let's say in the first lesson you learn the controls like how to control an aircraft and then 
you learn the power on and power off stalls and after that if you suddenly jump to steep turns then you won't remember the power on and power off correct, stalls correct correct so give your brain some time to absorb what you have learned go correct. home revise the procedures and stuff correct and next day move on to the next flight so correct. there's no point in rushing your flight training it, it is going True. to take around 1 year True. and I think one year is the ideal time. One to or like twelve to fifteen months is the ideal time for flight training. I've seen people doing their uh, commercial pilot license training in like six months, seven months. I wouldn't recommend it because you are just building your ass, like two hundred hours, and getting your CPL. You will not learn the skills which are required to be a commercial pilot. Okay. <laughs> So uh in that case how much time is on an average one lesson for you like one lesson is around like 2 to 3 hours so you no, get a block the flight for time flight time would be around 1 1 hour 30 minutes to 2 hours okay so then before the flight you have to be there for yes. flight preparation as yes. well right yes. for how much time approximately uh 1 hour one hour and then after the flight there is any there's debrief for 30 minutes right. so total i guess it's 3 to 4 hours so for one lesson also yes. it's about 3 to 4 to 4 hours. hours right correct great so basically in one lesson you learn like a lot of things right it's not yes. only one exercise that you learn so how the tco is designed so for each flight school it's different i don't know if you had something called as tco or the curriculum for your flight training like each so flight do you have separate list of things to do not really in okay. uh, here in india but maybe now in the flight schools which are there now if they have something like that then it's great but back in time it was not there in india there is uh, no, nothing like in one particular lesson you learn certain things but then of course the instructors know in what sequence they have to take the student from okay. the beginning to the solo phase and then further so it's about the exercise obviously initially you will be learning straight and level flight then you will be learning climb and descend then you learn turns, turns. thereafter you learn steep turns then stall etc yes. you know then slow flight and then Uh, high speed flight etc so these things are learned one after the other thereafter you move on to the circuit and landing where the combination of everything is there and then you perform it so yes it is there in a sequence here as well but there is no particular uh, things let down as such you know so that's uh, about it so in india in flight schools generally unless that flight school is extremely well organized where in you get some roster and you know whether at what time you have to report then uh, other than that particular flight school generally students have to go in the morning you stay there the whole day whenever you get an opportunity to go for flying and when that instructor calls you for a flight that is the time you go and then come back so this is during the training when you are released as solo and you are done with the lessons with the instructor and thereafter you can you know whenever the aircraft is free you can go on a solo cross country or you can go on a solo flight in the local flying area so that can be done so basically here in india it's more of uh, flying and staying in the flight school right from morning till evening so what that's what we used to do especially in the initial phase you have to go early in the morning because winds are calm yes. and then you get to learn the aircraft well whereas when you gain experience then in the afternoon even if winds are slightly gusty you can still manage the aircraft well so that's how we used to do I mean if you wait the whole day and at the end of the day you get to fly a plane you are exhausted by the time due to waiting and that that's how it is and i don't know like how how will you focus in in the flight because you are learning right so how so how th- either it's in the morning or, or in the evening okay so in the afternoon they generally avoid it because 
the winds are quite uh, gusty and okay. it is uh, challenging to handle the aircraft at that time moving on to question 8 do you get holidays yes we do get holidays but it's only during the christmas weekend we get off the flight school is shut but apart from that the flight school is always open and we do have flights but if we want to request certain days as holiday we can just submit our request and we would get leave on that particular day but okay. you only get 30 days leave for your entire flight training so let's say you want 2 days leave you submit a request and then you have 28 days remaining okay okay right so it <laughs> works like that okay i see here in india of course it depends on flight school to flight school but uh, if in case mainly if you have like if you have certain requirement to go back home or in case if there is any you know you want to go to prepare for your dgc exams so ideally it is good to prepare complete and clear all the exams before going for flying so that you go for flying and then you do it in continuation and finish it so there is no break but if in case someone has not done that and has started flying then in between for the exams yes you do get those offs other than that uh, there is barely like any day when the flight school is shut so there are times when if in case certain contingencies and exigencies could be there because of which the flight school cannot uh, you know be operational like for example if in case the cfi is not there in the flight school that is one of the case where the flight school cannot be operational which could happen you know and uh, if there is a issue like for example which is funny but it is possible that uh, you know the fuel gets over <laughs> in the flight fuel school, gets over in flight yes. school. <laughs> it has happened that the fuel is not there and <laughs> the flying is not happening so yeah there never heard of it 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 is possible now this fuel is not uh, you know it is not manufactured or you don't get it yes. at the flight school if in case for some reason the supply is not there <laughs> that means fuel gets over right so it's a holiday and then fuel, yeah <laughs> yes so i mean i have experienced these so okay, i'm telling I you i have until date <laughs> okay <laughs> so that's the time when we get holidays <laughs> okay <laughs> we used to get holidays when the weather is bad so there's cold front there's warm front right. so you still have to go to the school to cancel the flight correct right and uh, you know the weather is not going to be good there is like thunderstorms and stuff you still have to go to the school because it's school policy you have to go to the school and cancel the flight you have to fill out certain form to cancel mm-hmm. the flight and okay. then you come back home so at the end you have to go to school and cancel the flight come back no oh. moving on to question 9 What did you like the most about your commercial pilot training? The most enjoyable thing was uh, solo phase of flying, flying the plane by yourself, going to different airports, figuring out the route by yourself, like planning the route and then if you say the most important part in particular would be the landings. When you land the plane by yourself, when you are sole controller of the aircraft. correct 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 so that is the best part and once you start landing your best you feel like you are you are very energetic to land the plane correct. better than your last landing correct 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 so yes uh, solo everyone always feels that it is the amazing experience other than that i felt that whenever you change the aircraft to the new aircraft okay which is a bigger one the better one like initially i flew cessna 152s for about 10 hours there after i started flying cessna 172 i felt it is much more stable it is much more con- you know you can really uh, do a better job at in this aircraft then when i started flying multi p60 it was much more stable you know and you feel good that you feel better when you fly the a bigger airplane every time 
and uh, at the same time when you fly to the different places by yourself you know every day you are learning new things no it's super exciting yes. that you are making the whole flight plan you are writing the whole fuel figures when you do that same thing for so many hours then it gets you know same thing you're doing but yes. when there is something new to learn then it feels great i mean yeah. during during this solo phase like you learn so many new things there are so many new experiences correct correct but figuring out mistakes by yourself helps you to never repeat the same correct. mistake again correct so the most important thing about solo phase is you learn new things every day and most importantly you learn from your own mistake you realize like you have made a mistake and once you realize that you won't repeat that mistake again so just follow your checklist whenever you are flying solo because there's no one to tell you that you are making a mistake here correct correct definitely very true so what was the most uh, challenging experience that you have had which required a lot of your uh, attention and after landing you were like oh my god i've done a heroic thing today like landing when the weather is bad like when the weather is gusty right, that's right. the that's the thing when you feel correct, satisfied correct, when you correct, land correct. the aircraft true and uh, the weather gets bad like florida so uh, during the months of like september like august september there's peak hurricane season mm-hmm. weather starts building up in the afternoon let's say 12 1 and by the time it's 3 4 pm correct correct there's thunderstorms there's gusty true, wind true, and it's true. pouring heavily true. so usually what we used to do during a solo phase we used to book slots early in the morning let's say 7 o'clock 8 o'clock 9 10 so if we did not take off before 10 a.m then we used to do a short cross country and come back within mm-hmm, two hours mm-hmm, but if mm-hmm. we are do- going for a long cross country we used to make sure that we take off at 8 7 8 a.m and then return back by 1 2 p.m but Got in it. case if there's any delay if it's like 3 pm then you should be ready to land in that gusty weather correct 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 true so uh, recently like uh, just few weeks back since it's a pre monsoon season going on which is summer season so as you know that you know we have studied indian climatology in that uh, in the northeast there is norwester or kal baisakhi must have heard of it yes, that yes. it is a violent thunderstorm but i am not kidding it is violent to next level and i have experienced it just two weeks back and it is terrible the first time in my flying career i have experienced severe turbulence and i know what it exactly is now I get goosebumps just even talking about it because severe turbulence is you cannot maintain flight parameters. Autopilot is tripping. It is she is not maintaining the parameters that you want to maintain. Altitude is going haywire. Speed is going haywire. VS is going up down. Now you would think that why would you even go there? so the flight which was operating was from indore to kolkata if you know recently the spice jet uh, you know some passengers had this injury on board and in that same time i was in that air space which was in you know in calcutta air space so when we are going in we could see that there is a lot of weather building up and um, of course before this flight i had checked weather and um, i was like yes it is not something really great weather and um, i had checked on the prognostic chart as well as on the you know satellite picture that the weather is going to be building up and uh, at the time of arrival it was showing like it's moving now towards calcutta so basically we were coming in from indore 
to Kolkata. Okay, so Indore is here, Calcutta is here, and then going in from there, and weather is towards west of Kolkata, and gradually it was going towards east. east. Okay, so it always develops over there, like close to. Kolkata. So the as per the sad picture, it was like it is its movement is towards east. Okay. Now when we were going in there, I can see that weather is there towards my right. Like towards right, I, we had already deviated about sixty miles. Okay, from that weather, and weather is there towards left also. So there is a patch of about hundred and sixty miles. Hundred and sixty miles. Weather right from almost Bagdogra, all the way to Bhubaneswar. Okay, there was this patch in front of me on my screen. There is no gap where you can go through and go to Calcutta. Okay, and now this is the whole like it's like a huge wall. And behind that is runway for Calcutta, where we have to land. Now, like, holy shit! Where do you go from? You have no way. Now, this weather is moving. As per sad picture, this weather is supposed to, is going to move. And even the winds that we were seeing, winds were. Pushing us from behind. That is, we had tailwinds. Okay, so this is going to move that weather towards Kolkata. So I was like, there is no point in even reducing speed. There is no point in waiting here. I want to go and land before this weather goes over Kolkata and makes it worse. Like where it will, you know, not let us land. Now. I find a small gap out of whatever the patch, where I can go through. There is going to be. I can see that yes, this is not a good weather. But out of that whole thing, whatever the was the best of all, I spotted that and then went through that and asked all the passengers to be seated, all the cabin crew to be seated. And told them like really in very very firm words that yes, do not uh, get up and you know please wear your seat belts. There is going to be a bad patch of weather through which we will have to pass. We are trying to find the best possible way to get out of it as soon as possible, but do not use the restroom under any circumstances or do not use the lavatories. During this time, so I told them that very, very firmly. Everyone was seated. Okay, now we enter a patch. The way aircraft has shaken for those twenty-five, thirty miles, which was about three to four minutes, which is a long time. Huh? Three. Yes, three to four minutes. And in that, it's. Going like I'm trying to control now, just to pass. I was trying to go as you know soon as possible, and so we were avoiding because now runway is here. We were going in from north to mm. because through that patch, we were like okay. So aircraft is not even descending. I want to <laughs> descend. I want to go and land. It's not descending. It's just going up, not able to take flaps because there is a speed up to which, and there was absolutely no accidents, nothing. I mean, that was a great thing. I mean, we really managed that. So, with the first officer also, she was quite good and uh, cooperative, and you know, we had a good CRM. So, then we went this way and. We are like okay now. By this time, this weather is at the boundary of Calcutta. Okay, so weather is still here and runway is here, so it's at the boundary. Now we are on the approach. Aircraft ahead of us reported wind shear. Went around. 
we are at now 1000 feet kolkata final approach intercept altitude is 2000 we are descending on glide and we are like sh- bumping ba- shaky it is i'm like this is not the way a stabilized approach should be so we had 40 knots of tailwind 40, 40 knots, knots of, of tailwind. tailwind okay now ATC is like initially he said 10 knots within 5 seconds he said 20 knots next 2 seconds he said 30 knots next 2 seconds he said 35 knots like he's just changing the wind in like 3-4 seconds like that when we were at 1000 feet when he said 35 knots of tailwind like we are going around we cannot land with 35 knots of tailwind surface wind <laughs> our yes. aircraft limitation is only 15 knots okay like this is not happening we went around now we have just two approaches okay if we do go around on the second approach also we have to divert and that day luckily we had uh, you know fuel for the next sector also from this previous sector that is called as tankering so tankering is something because fuel at indore was cheaper than fuel at calcutta we carry fuel for the next sector from calcutta to wherever an aircraft had to go okay from that previous sector itself so we had a lot of fuel that day okay we had one hour 20 minutes of fuel otherwise you have about 20 to max 25, 25 minutes, minutes of extra, extra you know extra. you do, can't have like one hour <laughs> one hour <laughs> 20 minutes extra so we went around and go around takes a lot of fuel okay now we went around we were holding for things to you know be better but i knew now this thing is not going to be better for next for 30 to 45 minutes okay and we still had about one hour of fuel and wherever we go weather was coming to us <laughs> wherever we go and hold weather was coming to us we were just trying to avoid it and we were holding at different locations then <laughs> Okay. okay, because we had to change the position yes, because definitely. weather is moving towards us. And in this time, five aircrafts diverted. Because, as I said, you can't yes. have a lot of fuel. You need to make a decision if you think that it's not going to improve anytime soon. So, because the visibility was so bad, winds were gusting 30 35 knots of crosswind. So because of that, we were just holding and uh, that was not a great weather to land. No one was attempting to land and uh, we're like, we still have fuel, so might as well hold, you know. So now it's already been about 35 minutes to 40 minutes. Holding. After go around and okay, hold okay. and then, you know, we were wait holding at three four different locations we went out all the way about 45 miles from kolkata towards south for this patch to go because this patch was extremely severe so we were just keeping ourselves you know out of this weather this patch just passed and then still on approach it was bad so we when when this patch crossed the whole runway and now runway weather on the runway was better that means it was raining but with about 15 knots to 20 knots of crosswind which was okay which was not so bad and it was not like gusting crazy so then we attempted the approach but during that again while attempting the approach to intercept the localizer again we had to pass through some small patch and then um, we attempted and landed and during this time after that go around i made announcement to the passengers because of this bad weather and uh, we are waiting for the weather to improve and then after landing when i parked the aircraft and when doors were open i just wanted to meet all the passengers and they were so thankful for landing them safe and every passenger has thanked for 
that particular flight and they were like touching my feet they were like <laughs> you have saved our life today and it was great and so many ladies were crying that you know it might be their last flight of the day or whatever yeah and um, it was like when they actually said thank you i was like yeah i mean this is my yes. duty this is my job we did that in the best possible way as we could and uh, me and first officer both of us we were you know waiting for every we were just yes, greeting all the passengers yeah yes and it was a fantastic job it was it was the most yes. memorable flight that i would always you know remember which was the most one of the most challenging i would say one of the most challenging flights yes yes, yes. <laughs> great great job Keep yeah and most importantly and this slide like you took right decisions at the right firstly you went around then you were holding and a hold to wait for the weather to improve yes. and once you saw that the weather is improving you attempted to land and mm, yes. you landed safely and that's what a pilot does right yes great, we had great some job. some uh, mp on board our flight <laughs> and their wife and ladies were crying and they were <laughs> like really so i mean i remember one guy saying aapke dhairya ke samne hamari mardangi bhi bahut kam hai i was like oh my god hamare munh ki koi keemat nahi hai aapke you know dhairya ke samne i was like oh my god that is a lot to take from any guy and yeah because then they saw both of us like female pilots and they were like even more surprised so yes, i mean no no uh, discrimination or we are i'm not sexist about that but yeah it is just that situation how it was okay i mean yes there are great uh, pilots guys also and they are they are good of course but some people have that thing in mind that female pilots are not well performing <laughs> so that thought you know to overcome that i'm just saying nothing against any gender or <coughs> any of that sort okay so moving on to the next one what did you least like about your commercial pilot training flying during hot summer days so when it was the summer season i wish that i get early morning flights or late evening flights because somewhere during midday if i get a flight it it would be like so hectic because first of all when you go for a pre flight when the sun is overhead it's like 45 40 degrees celsius you get dehydrated while doing the pre flight you get all drenched in sweat you you drink like half liter of water when you're doing pre flight you you need to carry like <laughs> two three bottles of water Correct. and when you're doing the flight that time also like it's it it gets so hot and uh, we are training on the cessna 172 Correct. right it does not have ac <laughs> yes. and uh, you uh, like fly around 2000 3000 feet correct correct and while you are flying also there's like bumps here and mm-hmm. there so it's it's not a stable smooth flight straight and level correct so there's bumps so with everything going on around with the weather you need to fly the plane you need to learn how to fly okay okay and right on top right, of that right. you are sweating so you need to keep in mind that you have to drink water every like 15 correct, to 20 correct, minutes correct correct because if you don't get water then you tend to get dizzy or correct, like you yes, are not yes. able to focus correct. on your training right so True. that was the part which i personally did not enjoy that much but yes it's it's a part of training so whenever i get the midday flights mm-hmm. i used to mm-hmm. like drink a lot of water before i Correct. go for a flight i Correct. used to take Correct. like glucose and stuff and then yes, yeah it, yes. it was a good experience but yeah yes initially it is possible that you know in the afternoon when you start flying then uh, you know initially there is possibility of motion sickness you know in yes, summer yes. days and you are flying with that gusty weather and yes. then oh my god so that is something which can get you 
depends uh, so on individual to individual but then initially it is possible later on you get used to it so then it's okay yes the first so, flight in hmm. in the summer days is hmm. kind of challenging but Very. once you know that this is going to happen correct. you are prepared for it for true, the next flight true 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 correct question number 11 how difficult was it to manage daily chores cooking food and the flight training initially it was difficult because you are moving in with new mm-hmm, roommates mm-hmm. you don't know like who knows cooking right kare, kare, so kare. Uh, basically uh, we have we were living in an apartment so there were two rooms so total kare, four people kare, living kare. in an apartment True. so uh, initially we what we did was we used to cook together one meal every night True. but uh, later on as we progressed like everyone had different schedules and kare. stuff so whoever was free used to cook a uh, dinner and lunch like the food for the whole day and uh, whoever y- used to have flight used to just come and eat and do the dishes and stuff so we divided our work accordingly and uh, when like everyone is busy with their flight we used to order something from the True. restaurants and okay, stuff okay 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 so so it was a bit challenging at the start and then we learned new recipes which we can cook in like 10 15 minutes like oats is there then milkshake is there banana kare, peanut kare, butter kare, milkshake kare. and stuff so it it saves time and it fills your stomach and it's healthy true so that's how we managed cooking Correct. and uh, later for laundry we used to do laundry once a week and uh, apart from that everything was like going smooth true. so you don't need uh, so i have heard people saying that once you go abroad you won't get food i'm i'm a vegetarian so they were like there's there's nothing yeah. available in vegetarian when you go Correct. to us huh. but that is not true you get various food options when you go to us so there is there's so first of all you have milk you have curd and then you have this frozen parathas like onion paratha aloo paratha and okay, stuff okay. so we had everything in our refrigerator okay <laughs> so whenever <laughs> we feel lazy or when we are tired after a flight we used to just keep it in the oven and in 5 minutes we okay, had okay, anything okay. we had on I our table <laughs> great that's that's good so uh, i have seen your uh, vlog you yes. had put up when you were doing your training that uh, all of you were uh, yes. cooking and thereafter you get ready and then go for a flight yes that that so. was during co- uh, covid when uh, hmm. we did mm-hmm. not have mm-hmm. our flights mm-hmm. for Got one it. month so that what we had done during that time was every night we used to gather at my place correct and uh, uh, like we used to cook together the recipes so correct, we correct. made like dal bati then we True. made some uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, chana chaat and correct, stuff. So correct. every every day, uh, we used to make something new, right? So that every one of us would enjoy. Awesome. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> Though here in India, it is uh, more of you know, there are uh, PGs so where there would be you know sometimes mess or there could be. Defense you know, tiffin service, so you can. In US also, also, where so. where I live, there would be a tiffin service for eight mm-hmm, dollars. Mm-hmm, They used mm-hmm, to provide mm-hmm. meals, but. Uh, We, yeah we used to make our own food because right. a, at a, at a point of time you will be like how much correct correct how much correct correct, yes. correct true and you don't you don't like that food true, like true. every day once Definitely. in a while it's okay yeah. but not every day yeah it needs to be palatable as yes. well <laughs> hey yep. all right moving on to question 12 in comparison to dgc exams how is fa knowledge test fa knowledge test is based on the uh, practicality of flying an aircraft so uh if you read the theory once you'll understand the concept and stuff and then you go to the question bank and uh, in a week you study and you pass the exam it's as simple as that but if you are preparing for dc exams it's not the same you have to clear the concepts you have to understand the concepts and for that the best place to go for your training is cnta i have personally been a student at CNTA and i have cleared all the three papers in less than 30 days with the guidance of captain neha that's amazing great job you've done and uh, yes definitely it is a uh, great advice as uh, winged engineer said he it is his own experience as well as we have thousands of students whose experience is the same and they have been able to make it 
in DGC exam. So if you are an aspiring pilot and willing to clear your DGC exams in the first attempt, sign up to watch the demo lessons on courses.cntaaonline.in and I'm sure you would love it. Moving on to question 13. Can you give a rough estimate of expenses other than flight training in US? Other than flight training in US, the main expense would be, I guess, food and shopping, which you do for yourself. <laughs> so uh, shopping, it's a personal thing. So it depends on person to person. And for food, weekly, I would say around 50 to $100 if you cook food every day at your home. But if you tend to go out, it should be around 100 to 150 a uh, week so around uh, for a month you look at around uh, 350 to 500 dollars a month for your food and uh, it it really depends on the lifestyle you live correct, so correct. i used to go out for like two to three days a week because when you have uh, the flight back to back like every day you come home and you are tired so you are not in the mood of cooking so you just order correct. food from restaurant correct, correct. and if you have like morning and evening flight you don't come back home you just mm -hmm, have food mm -hmm. at the flight school correct so uh, there's a food truck and uh, things at correct, the flight school correct. but it's uh, little on the expensive side because uh, i being vegetarian vegetarian food is a bit expensive than non vegetarian okay side. i see yes <laughs> so Yes, so expenses for food would be that much. If you're a person who like to explore natural reserves, so it's generally free, but uh, the maximum fee would be 5 to $10. So it's pretty cheap, just the traveling cost is... Like for? For natural reserve, like springs or okay. uh, national park and okay, stuff. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, that's amazing. Nice. Moving on to question 14. How did the instructors teach you? So instructors were very professional. They know how to instruct students. So let's say you are captain and you are flying with new first officer. So since you are flying for like five years now and you know each and everything, the new first officers wouldn't know that. They wouldn't be like familiar with the flow, but with time they would be familiar. So you would have a high level of patience, right? Of Same course. is the thing with instructors. So instructors were very patient. They used to teach you things again and again because... Uh, initially that is required so i think the nature of instructors were very good and uh, the only thing we need to do was just to follow the procedures and rest everything instructors used to teach us correct correct great yeah i mean it is important that one experienced uh, pilot is, is supposed to Keep, make the other person and trainee comfortable yes, the one who definitely. has lesser experience and not put so much pressure that he or she cannot perform whatever yes. she can perform so yes that's very true so question number 15 was there any racism so during my training period in us i haven't experienced a single incident of racism all the people were very friendly and if you don't know anything if you ask anyone on the street they would be happy to help you okay okay so i personally don't think or I personally haven't experienced anything of that sort during my training period. Correct, correct. Great. Awesome. Then uh, question 16. Which was your best airport to fly to? The best airport for me was uh, Fort Myers Airport, which is also okay. called as Peaceful Airport. So it was located uh, due uh, south west of uh, Sanford and uh, why I like that airport was because the refueling would be done very quickly so as to save time and secondly they had a very good pilot launch where you can have food and drinks right, and right, uh, right. that would like after doing like one and a half a leg it would be get good it. to have some food and get refreshed right, and stuff right. and uh, thirdly it was located at a uh, distance where i used to like go there and come back within five hours of my flight school okay. so I, I used to clock in like around four to four and a half hours of flight time okay okay in okay. the fire block oh okay that's so great. that that's the uh, reasons i like that airport mm -hmm, and uh, mm -hmm. the airspace was also not that busy so i did, did not have to hold for takeoff or did not have okay, to okay, hold okay, for, okay, la okay, for okay. landing for me srinagar yes i love it <laughs> it is amazing airport so many mountains around yes. and especially in winter it is snow covered mountains 
and it's so beautiful that is of course uh, one best uh, airport to go to the other one uh, even maldives is it's good for beaches like you can see such beautiful, beautiful green beaches. beaches and green sea around and it's so pretty it's it's uh, very nice those um, hotels uh, yes. which are there no resorts you can see that island resorts, uh, island resorts. Uh, you can see that when you're on the approach <laughs> so, so do, you, do you get leo in maldives no. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got a lever in Maldives. <laughs> yeah. Moving on to question 17. Did you miss your family when you moved to USA for flight training? Uh yes, at certain point uh I do miss my family when uh, let let's say when I am upgrading from student pilot to True. private pilot. So True. that is a milestone which I have achieved. So at that point if I if I have my family with me that would be great, but apart from that uh you are occupied with so much work that you don't have time to miss anyone correct you are correct, just focused correct. on your training True. but when when you achieve a certain milestone at that time you want to share that milestone with your family so correct. at that point you do miss your family correct correct true definitely then next one how is student life different at flight school compared to a university i think i'm qualified to answer this question because yes. i am a civil engineer yeah. and i also that my commercial pilot correct, training correct correct so at university like the students which are enrolled in that university come to the class at a given time and all of them are present at the same time correct at a flight school it's not like that everyone has different time to report to the flight school so you don't meet everyone every day correct S- you meet uh, different people different days so you never like fly with the same students again and again correct correct okay so that is uh, one difference other is you don't uh, have uh, i would say the clubs like in the university you have like the dance club then the sports club mm-hmm, and stuff mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. in a flight school there's nothing sort of that because it's located at the airport but we do have like picnics and we do have sports day where we book the turf and go and play soccer or cricket and stuff it depends quite a lot on flight school to flight school of course yes yeah i mean this mm. this i'm sharing my flight to school correct, experience correct, i don't correct. know how is it in india but uh, I think in flight school they they would have a sports thing or some recreational they try to you know keep it so that there is some change other than what is the routine life yeah yes and this this uh, like flight school is a very practical thing you you learn the plane by flying it and university i think it's more of a theoretical thing like you study in the classroom only you write the exams and stuff correct. but at a flight school you have to give the check right which is the practical flying test correct correct so correct so this is the main difference between a flight true. school and a university true yes i mean uh, that's absolutely right as you have experienced both of them yes, is yes. one after the other so you can answer better Moving on to the last one, any advice that you would like to give to aspiring pilots? So one advice I would like to give aspiring pilots is staying ahead of their training. So what I mean by that is flight school do have a TCO which is known as the curriculum for your flight training. So let's say in lesson 1 you are going to do straight and level flight, your turns, your as- climbs and descents. So before that lesson you go through the TCO, you see the things which you are going to learn. What is TCO? is training curriculum outline something okay. like that hmm. okay so once you go through that chapter you know what you are going to learn in that particular flight so if you don't have a tco for the flight school you can ask the instructor what is he going going to teach in that particular lesson so you can study the procedures before that lesson so that when you go to the flight when the instructor demonstrate you the maneuvers you are not surprised ki what did he just do okay hmm. so hmm. in hmm. that way you learn twice like you already know correct. okay and the instructor correct. will demonstrate you correct and then you will perform that maneuver so it gets imprinted in your brain and the next time when you go for flight you you would be 
pretty confident about that maneuver and other thing is if there is a new maneuver let's say steep turns you can always ask senior students like how did they do that maneuver hmm. so they will share their experience and with Got that it. experience you can learn the tips and tricks okay so in that way you are prepared for that lesson before the lesson correct definitely yes i totally agree with it uh, one advice which uh, even i would like to give is student pilot phase is something where you can either make your career or break it so Definitely. if in case you are focused make sure what is your goal you need to write it down what is your goal write down today's goal whatever is your exercise plan as wing engineer said do it so there are a lot of distractions which might come your way like lot of people around you some might be smoking some might be drinking excessively some might be you know even smoking up or using drugs make sure that what you have to do in life is you stick to it and stay away from these things these things are not going to do anything good for you in your life so make sure you stay focused and you be consistent no matter whatever is the challenge come your way you have to be persistent you have to be consistent and if you do that i'm sure you will be a successful pilot with the right guidance for which we are there to guide you for flying training wing engineer is there for your ground training i'm there take our advice and you will be successful that is a small piece of advice from our end for you as a trainee pilot yes and i hope you like this podcast and if you do have any topics in mind for the upcoming podcast please do comment and like share and subscribe and thank you for watching thank you very much for watching this and we'll see you in the next one next week till then bye bye take care bye bye take care bye and yes don't forget to watch top gun 2